Hello. Hope you can join in here on our children's sermon. Give me a buzz. I know there's some people out there, but uh, I know it takes a while to get on. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, it's one of those days, you know, you have those days. All the kibbles are here. Colton, Nolan, Kenzie, Donna, and Dennis. Good to see you. I uh, was having a salad and hamburgers with a grilled onion for uh, supper. And I just gotten a piece for the uh, gas grill because the uh, regulator froze up. Hi, Carol. Hi, Mark. Hi, Olivia. Good to see you. Uh, so for, it must have been leaking or something because it froze up. It was all frosty, like, you know, an anhydrous ammonia coupler gets. So uh, I had to start the outdoor grill because I didn't want to make a mess, a splattering mess on the stove. Because if I made a mess on the stove, you know who has to clean it up? No, not me. Darren has to clean it up, right, Darren? Hi, Darren. Hi, Leah, Maya, Mia, and Joey. No, I'm just kidding, Darren. You don't have to clean that up. If I make the mess, I have to clean it up. But uh, so I had to start the charcoal grill. So that takes a little bit. Then so I'm here late, but uh, better late than never. Uh, I hope you all had a good day. Mine was okay. Didn't really accomplish a lot. Aaron's here. It was awful windy. But you know what's good about the wind is it blows away the leaves that are in the yard. But it also blows in all the paper that was trapped under all the snow. So you got paper and Coke cans and milk cartons and who knows what all is blowing in today. So I guess uh, the snow was hiding it. Princeton here, we're pretty much free of snow. I know yesterday up in Ohio, we still had a bit of snow left. Uh, you have snow left there, Marlene and kids? But uh, yeah, the grass is a little greener. The bunnies were out running around in the yard eating grass, making fertilizer. And uh, you know, the grass is getting green just a tad, just a tad. And the bush outside of our window, I often talk about that bush, it's a rhododendron. It has these leaves, and when it gets like 25 or 22 degrees, they curl up like pine needles. So when we look out the window and we see the rhododendron with its leaves all curled up trying to stay warm, it uh, it uh, we know it's cold out. A little bit in Ohio. Crystal says a little bit there. Hi, Crystal and uh, Luca. Get my water down here. Luca and Clara, good to see you. But this rhododendron, you know, it's also nice about, you know, it tells the temperature. Is it also tells when spring is coming? See those buds on the end? Right here. They get good and hard, and they get soft and plump. And we know that it's just about time for them to open up. And it's beautiful for a whole week or so in our entryway because the flowers are 
purple, purplish pink. That usually gets just full of them. So we know when these buds come that it's time for spring. It's going to be nice. Also means it's time for the uh, Masters Golf Tournament. <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus talks about being ready for the kingdom of God. Hi, Janice. Kingdom of God for when Jesus returns to the earth. When he comes and the world lives together in joy and love and peace. No one knows that time. Nobody knows except for God the Father. Jesus says he doesn't even know. He just goes where the Father sends him. But he says that there will be signs. Signs not like the rhododendron getting ready to have buds. But Jesus said, well, let me read it to you. It's in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus said, from the fig tree, learn its lessons. As soon as the branch becomes tender and puts out leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these signs, you know that he is near the very gates. The kingdom is here. Figs. Anybody know what figs are? Figs grow kind of in the desert, like around, uh, well, yeah, around Israel and in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, those places. They also grow in California and Arizona. They grow on a, a tree like almost a big bush, and these are dried ones dried figs. When they're not dry, they look kind of like plums. They're not too big. Get in there close. But they're very sweet. How many of you have eaten figs? Have a bunch of little seeds in the middle there. Looks like a monster. Oh, I'm coming to get you, wow. <laughs> so figs grow, grew where Jesus was. And he said, he pointed to a branch from a fig tree. And he said, see these buds here? See how tender the end of this is? This isn't a fig, it's a forsythia, but I'll pretend it's a fig. He said that when you see that these are turning green and soft and getting ready, you know that spring and summer is here because the fruit will be here. And then he says that's when you know that the kingdom of God will be here. When there's signs, when there's all sorts of signs and the signs of the kingdom coming aren't really good signs. There are lots of wars and lots of diseases and illness like coronavirus and lots of earthquakes and hurricanes and crime in the streets and killing and violence and all those things. Those are signs that things are getting out of hand and God is going to come. That Jesus will come and he'll clean up the mess. And we can all live and love with each other and not argue and fight. And it'll be like paradise. It'll be like when Adam and Eve were in the garden. Things will be perfect. Arlene says her grandfather had some when figs when she was young. Did you live in the Southwest or I guess you can grow plums up here and maybe figs, I don't know. 
anyways. So Jesus encourages us to be ready when we see these signs. Just like when we see the signs of the snow melting and the grass starting to green and the trees starting to get leaves, we know it's time to get our tennis shoes out. Except we have to stay out of the mud, right, Marlene? But it means we can get our tennis shoes out and get ready and our short sleeve shirts out because it's time for summer. And we know when all these bad signs happen that we can still be at peace. We can still be at rest because we know that's just a sign that Jesus is coming to be king, king of the kingdom, his kingdom, the kingdom of love. Won't that be nice when that happens? In your baptism, God has invited you into that kingdom. It's your ticket. It's your wristband. The mark of the sign of the cross on your forehead with oil it says, come into the kingdom. You are loved. Yep, I can't wait. I can't wait till the forsythia buds and it's time for the masters. I can't, or the forsythia, the rhododendron. I can't wait for the forsythia to turn with all the yellow colors. And I can't wait for Jesus to come so that we can all live in paradise. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your teaching. We thank you for opening our eyes to see the coming of your kingdom, your kingdom of love, your kingdom when we all our friends get together and we're nice to each other and we love each other because all our sin, all our hate is gone. Lord, help us in the meantime to act like that, to act friendly, to act nice to others, to love others. Because we know that's what you would want us to do. Lord, we thank you for these children gathered here and the other parents and grandparents and their loved ones who help teach them. We ask that you bless each and every one of them. We pray this in all things, in your holy name. And all God's children said, Amen. It was great to be here with you today. I hope your supper wasn't as rushed as mine was. But, uh, I needed to come and see you today because I look forward to that. And I look forward to uh, having you all in church. So until then, remember that God loves you, and so do I. Good night.